Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Dating Made Simple on the It's Just Dinner podcast. I am your host, Tom Robinson, and sitting right across from me, my co-host, Is Bob Wallace. So you're the boss, so that makes me the, Kirby. That's good. Well, wow, do you like, I like that. Yeah. And sitting across from me on the other side of you, Bob, is the great Macy. I think Macy's the hey boss. Hey, guys, I'm, so, I'm back again. I, I keep coming back. I'm surprised I, you guys still let me come back, well, honestly. You, we I like think when you make Macy the boss. It's always delightful when and, she's here. So we have a guest <laughs> with us today. Her name is Rihanna Milne, and she is a licensed mental health counselor. Wow. Um, yeah, and she is a love, life, and relationship coach. Wow. I so love you that. mean we actually have someone on the podcast who knows what they're talking about? Knows what the heck she's talking about. <laughs> That's got credentials. She, uh, Welcome, Rihanna. You can't tell you how glad we are to have you here. For real. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's great Rihanna, to be you here. You are a best-selling author, too. Is that right? Yes, I'm the number one best-selling author for several books. I've written a total of 13. Wow. But the book on love is called Love Beyond Your Dreams. Break free of toxic relationships to have the love you deserve. That's how that is chock full of research, that. but an easy-to-read book. Yeah, give you lots of answers. You have a podcast on the same topic, is that right? Yes, that's called Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. Right now, I have 120 shows. Uh, and on my YouTube channel, I have about 350 educational videos for free. Yeah, wow. I've looked at I've looked at a lot of your videos, and they are absolutely amazing. Um, so Thank you. We, want, we really want to get into some of the things that you're an expert in, some of the things that you talk about, some of the things that that you can help our audience with. Um, so, I mean, let's just dig right in. Why are, in your opinion, are some of these uh, people out there having a problem dating and why are they struggling in relationships? What do you think? Okay. Well, there's several things going on. First of all, our world is crazy today. Uh, <laughs> um, there's a lot of people, you know, due to job insecurity and inflation and, you know, people trying to get their lives together before they have serious relationships to move on to marriage and family. That's one, which we call environmental or a community issue. But there's actually, from my research, I came out with a childhood trauma checklist. And this is the main reason. Uh, developed in 2012, I did the research and there are more than 10 childhood traumas. But I worked as a crisis trauma counselor in schools at every grade level, kindergarten through college. And the mental health ward for kids ages five through 19. And even a drug and alcohol facility facility for adolescents and women from the prison system. So it doesn't matter their background, race, age, culture. These top 10 traumas kept coming up that if they experience these events as young people, um, then they will be struggling in their adult relationships. And adult means 18 plus. Right. So the top 10 traumas, you know, most people like negate it as, oh, those aren't a big deal. But the problems is they become the subconscious norms and behavioral patterns that don't serve them. Oh. So I can go into what those top 10 are. I'd love That's to it. hear that. Yeah, I'm like, some idea. So yeah, start that. us off. I'm interested to hear what- And you have a pencil and pen because you might want to jot them down, see how yeah. many you have. Because in 2021, the research, when I did the research for my 2012 assessment tool, 90% of people could admit, yeah, I had a couple of those traumas. Right. In 2021, they're saying 100% of us do have some of the top 10 childhood oh, wow. traumas. So also childhood trauma goes through at least three generations. So if you can recognize it in you, your mom and dad had some, and so did their parents. So it goes through at least three generations. And again, this is not about blaming your parents or feeling ashamed if you have them. The point is, and when I identified mine, I knew I couldn't change what I didn't know or understand. That was the most frustrating part. Like, why am I choosing toxic partners? I didn't get it. Right. I'm a pretty cool lady. I'm smart. I'm a great mom, good businesswoman. Like, why am I getting these types of partners? Well, it was because of my childhood traumas that I had to heal yeah. and understand the patterns of what I was doing. And then it all made sense. Right. And then you can choose someone who's more emotionally healthy, evolved and conscious as you are. Okay. So okay. here's the top 10. The first one is if you had any addiction in the family. So okay. being also an addictions counselor, that mean, could be drugs, alcohol, sex, meaning you knew your parent was a cheater, porn, gambling, hoarding, spending, eating, gaming, TV watching, 
social me uh, media addiction, like being on your machines all the time, Everybody. or workaholism. Yeah, I'm the TV. Well, if you're a parent, you really want to start looking at that. You shouldn't be on your machines all the time because your kids are not getting the emotional interaction that they really need to have. Wow. So that's number one. Yeah. Number two is uh, verbal messaging. So as a child, did you hear uh, compliments and things like accolades, like great job, kiddo, I'm proud of you. That's all right. You didn't get first. I'm still proud you tried your best. Or did you hear that's not good enough or change your clothes. You look fat in that, <laughs> you know, or I'm not sending you to college and wasting my money. So these are verbal put downs, making you feel not good enough. Or how did your parents work through an issue? If they were fighting all the time, yelling and screaming, that could be the pattern you pick up as this is how I handle problems by yelling or passive aggressively shutting down and not talking for days because that's what you were taught. This is how we handle our problems. Okay, number three is emotional abuse or neglect. Interesting. Number four is around abandonment. And there's two types. There's fault and no fault. So a no-fault abandonment would be if your parent happened to die early or if they were deployed fighting for their country for war or even traveling a lot as a professional. My dad, we didn't know it. He was FBI and CIA. And I remember asking as a kid, where's dad? Where is he? Is he safe? When's he coming home? You know, and none of our family, not even my mom knew he was a CIA guy. So we didn't really know where he was until he walked in the door. But he, that's how he supported the family. So that's a no fault abandonment. A fault abandonment would be never being involved with your child, being involved while the couple stays together. But once there's a breakup or divorce, you don't see your child much or it's inconsistent. Or another example is they're even present in the home, but not emotionally evolved. They're in oh. front of the TV, they don't go to your school events. They're just not emotionally there. They're so that's abandonment, which is one. Yeah, that's a big one. The next one is um, if you were adopted, part of the foster care system or had to go live in another person's home, even if it's an aunt or a grandmother, even if it's for summers, you know, and not the school year. So there's all these different segues that I have to look at as your counselor and coach to see where these fall in line. But that's number six. Number seven is personal trauma. And this is if you felt different in any way. So you could have been a short, chubby child. You could have been skinny and gawky and teased for that and called a nerd. You could have been the only African-American in all Caucasian school and teased for race or culture. So there's so many different ways of not feeling accepted and feeling less than. So that's personal trauma if you were bullied for any reason or felt different. Trauma eight is around siblings. So did your sibling tease or bully you? Or did you perceive them to be the golden child, the favored one, the star athlete, more handsome, more beautiful, the smarter kid, and you were compared to them all the time? Or it could have been your sibling had a medical issue and mom and dad had to give them more time and attention. See, now I'm understanding Number nine. with my brothers and sisters. <laughs> uh, the golden child. So. Oh, Tom, you were the golden uh, child. Ah, see? You can recognize it though, right? When we, when we know that. <laughs> and then number nine actually has two. I had to bring down trauma 11 because when I made the list, trauma 11 was not too prevalent, which was community trauma. Oh. So we all have been through the impact of COVID. Also involved with that is mother and nature events, floods, fires, hurricanes, which impacts a whole community. Inflation is impacting a whole community. So that has become one of the biggest traumas now. And then second to that, and number nine is family trauma. So that could be a family moving every two to four years here in the U.S. for military reasons or growing up in poverty and in a dangerous neighborhood, a parent being incarcerated, um, hearing struggling messages around money all the time. Like we don't have enough to pay the bills. That really makes a kid feel a very insecure and nervous. You know, parents are always talking about struggling and not making it. There's a lot around family, of course. And then number 10 is if you perceive mom or dad to have mental health issues. Now, not all parents will go to counselors. When I was growing up, I'm a baby boomer. So our parents never went to counseling, you know, so we just kind of have to guess. 
Um, the two hardest for kids to navigate around would be borderline personality, which means real erratic mood. When they're good, they're great, but when they're bad, they're horrible, and you never know what you're going to get as a kid. They explode at the littlest thing with anger, and it keeps the kids walking on eggshells. Right. Then the other one is bipolar, which is manic depressive. So a depressed parent can show up as anger, checking out emotionally, irritability, or, you know, just extreme fatigue. And then the manic phase, some people say, well, that's the high and happy one, but it's usually tied to an addiction. So many, a, a spending spree, and they're really happy with what they bought, but a month later, it's a hard depressive crash because they don't have the money to pay the bill. So that's just an example of that. So those are the top 10 traumas. Um, and there's something called big T traumas and little T traumas. So most of these emotional ones that are ongoing are little T traumas, but they have the equal impact of a big T trauma in the, in the body, in the brain, in the body, and how the body processes trauma as such as being raped or molested, which is a big T trauma or having a car accident and losing a leg, something like that. But the trauma response in the brain and the body are the same. Oh, interesting. Well, this, that, this is like, I feel like every bad thing that is in the entire world, that's that you said the top, <laughs> I feel like it's like, I'm like, okay, so everybody definitely has at least one of these because uh, like everything. So your research showed that okay. a percent of people suffer from one of those. Yes. Most people can identify three to four, three to six, something like that. Um, people who are in the higher categories of nine or 10 are really struggling. This is more often where I see narcissistic personalities or sociopathic tendencies. So if our people, our listeners are dating someone and you know they're very abusive or selfish, then they usually have about nine to 10 traumas. Wow. So how do they show up when we're dating? Let's go yeah, into that. <laughs> so, cause I hear a lot of young people, cause I work with people age 16 plus uh, virtually. So, you know, when you have a very jealous or controlling boyfriend, for example, that would be someone that didn't feel good enough. They were put down or bullied. Uh, they also got verbal messages from mom and dad. They weren't good enough. They're not smart enough. Um, so that's where jealousy and control comes on. Even if you as the girlfriend is a perfect partner, reassuring them all the time, it doesn't matter. It's something within the psyche of that person, the subconscious. And that's what my job is to heal that and then help right. them feel emotionally healthy. Um, people pleasing is one that I see a lot of my women do. Um, and again, when you grow up with this, this lasts lifelong. I have trauma cl clients into their seventies. I'm healing this for, wow. so the message is soon them, you know, heal them sooner than later. Yeah. So uh, people pleasing comes from growing up with a very difficult parent or maybe an alcoholic. You know, you're tiptoeing around to make sure you're not upsetting them. This might be the young girl that has to get her siblings up, make the lunches, get them to the bus stop. So mom who's hung over doesn't get you know up and upset and yelling and screaming at all of them. So the people pleasing becomes a habit of if I please them to death, then they will love me. And then normally I hear you know from, and this is a true story, a, a wife coming to me and saying, I do everything for my husband and my kids, you know, and I never feel like they do anything for me. They don't say that they love me. And the, the guy says, well, I didn't ask you to do all those things. So the more she kept trying to please him and please him, she goes, I lost who I am. I don't know who I am. I'm not happy. I'm numb. It's like they just lost all joy. So that's people pleasing. Wow. If there are abandonment issues, this is where our codependency comes in and love addiction and then there's something called RRS, Relationship Repetition Syndrome. So that would be going back to the same person over and over again. And the research oh, right. actually shows an average of seven times. So wow. they, their conscious mind says, I know this person's not good for me. So I'm breaking up. And then they'll, they'll be strong for about a week. And then the other one tries to come back in and apologizes. It'll be different. You'll see, blah, blah, blah. So in about 10 to 14 days... They get back together. They go out and they find the same kind of man or the same kind of yes. woman. When they say, oh, I'll Correct. never date another a person like that, or I'll never marry a person like that again, they end up with the exact same type of person. Yes. 
That's right. That's because the original traumas are not healed. And people are falling in love by chemistry. It is the worst way to pick a partner. Oh, and we learn this. Yeah, we oh, learn this in movies and our romance novels like Sleeping Beauty, our little stories as kids. If the handsome prince kisses you and you're feeling all fluttered, oh, wow, let's fall in love. You right. know, but you have no background history on these people. And this is the problem. I feel like that's um, all I hear is it's like, oh, like we're, we work well together, or we vibe or whatever, maybe kind of like the whole chemistry thing, like our chemistry is good, whatever. But if you don't, if, yeah. I mean, I would agree. I think that there has to be like some logic behind who you're going to date and marry. But I guess, how do you, well, how would you explain if you, if you're not going off of chemistry for those, that, for those that are just going off that right now? There has to be an attraction factor, but you have to do date with emotional intelligence. And that's what I teach my people. What are the questions that you ask? You should know in one or two dates if this person's right for you or not. When you know the 36 red flags that I teach them, they start seeing one, two, or three of them and the degree of how difficult they are. If they start yelling at you or screaming at you, it only gets worse. We don't care how that much they apologize. This is a fatal flaw. This yeah. is a major red flag. So you really have to date consciously and ask the questions and be aware and not let chemistry take over. Wow. Too many young kids are into hooking up. They think sex is the answer. It's not. It's going to make things worse because in the brain, phenylalanine and oxytocin is flying around in your head, making you more connected to someone that you should not be connected to because that's really not the right person for you. So the secret is slow the frig down, <laughs> date, ask intelligent questions. And there's 24 questions that I name in my Love Beyond Your Dreams book in the, in the back end of that book. Because you want to date intelligently. You want to choose a partner that will be a good husband or wife and a good mother or father to your children, not just based on chemistry. Yeah. Okay. So, and a great so communicator too. Yeah. Okay. So I, you don't have to tell all of them because obviously there's 36 of them, but like, what are some of those that are maybe more conspicuous Common. people people like Common. the people maybe that people don't notice because i feel like right. i'd be like oh he just yelled at me like wow like i feel like he that's a big one you know like red that's huge yeah poor what mood management problem? when they're upset they need to be able to communicate look, look i've I, you did something that upset me i'd like to tell you about it there's never a reason to yell unless someone's in harm's way like watch out the bus is going to hit you that's the only time you yell at someone no I, so I, someone's I, yelling at you that's the wrong partner, period. No discussion. What What yeah. are some lesser known red flags? Um, well, there's a lot of them. You know, a pining <laughs> after an old flame, secret relationships, or we call it the secret life, any kind of cheating, one and done, get rid of it. Don't keep forgiving them. That is a character flaw. That is someone, where's cheating come from? Okay, that's someone, again, who doesn't feel good enough. Mm. I have a lot of high powered couples where the woman's making, you know, really successful in business and her husband, maybe not. And then he goes out and cheats with the waitress next door because she's idolizing him, you know, and he doesn't feel good enough and she intimidates him. Why? Because his self-esteem is not where it should be, mm. you know, or the older man going after the younger woman. Why? Because his ego is not in place for himself. He doesn't really feel accomplished for who he is. So he goes after someone who's more of a trophy to make him feel more important. So, you know, there's a ton of red flags, shutting down passive aggressive behavior, not discussing something, you know, like, no, I'm not going to talk to you. Calling someone 19, 25 times. If they say, look, <laughs> I need a break. Let's just talk about it tomorrow. Then that person's calling you because they want to talk about it now. Right. Nope. Oh, toxic. Red, flag. red flag. Yeah. So what do you do if you red have flags. These red flags? What should someone do? I mean, Leave. You, you just cut it off <laughs> right there. Just cut yeah. it off. Them, block them. Yeah. You know. uh, yes. If, especially if they're abusive in any way, block their number. Oh, if yeah, you have absolutely. to you go for the protection from abuse order, um, start building a case, start saving the texts that are toxic. I mean, it's really unfortunate, the high, high stats of men killing women today. So women do not allow any kind of abuse whatsoever. It's not forgivable. It's something you need to move on from. 
Um, yeah, it's, it happens constantly. So you really have to put yourself first. Self-love is really important to have self-confidence. And then my young people, I raised two daughters they are now 40 and 41, but I said in your twenties, build your careers. My one daughter became a very successful singer on three multi-platinum CDs. Oh, go and became her. A host for, yeah, for E! Entertainment News and then was on HGTV with a couple of TV shows. This was all in her 20s. So she built her whole modeling acting career. She had a boyfriend tying her down. None of that would have happened. And today she's one of the top coaches in the world, Alexi Panos. The 20s is the time period where you are building your huge momentum for your career. If you really focus on yourself and self-love, and it's okay to date, but be clear up front, like, hey, I'm working on this project. We can date, but I'm not looking for marriage in a serious relationship to my 30s, you know, something like that. Right. So right. it's important that you do you and you speak up what your needs are. Uh, early on, because if that guy would say, well, I want marriage to a woman who's in her young 20s, say, well, that's perfect. And you should have that. But I'm not going to be that person. You know, <laughs> so it's not never an argument. You never have to argue with anyone. You can yeah. release them in love or say, I think we're better just being friends. Let's just date and be friends. Right. And the best relationships always come from a solid foundation of friendship first. I agree. You yeah. trust each other. You really like each other. You have fun with each other. You're your total self, authentically you. You're not putting on any fake airs and really knowing that person over time. That's the best solution to an evolved relationship. Those are great. And, and yeah. As a coach, when someone identifies their childhood traumas, which everyone has, how do you help them to move past that? What, what do you do to counsel them so that they can... Uh, deal with that trauma that they've experienced? Well, I'm a certified clinical trauma professional. The initials are CCTP uh, advanced dash two, two. Uh, so I have tons of tools in my toolbox. The thing is, once I do the initial assessment, which is called a life and love discovery session, I know what their traumas are. I know the severity levels, and then I know how they're showing up in their dating or love relationships. So I assess the past, what's going on presently, and then we bridge it together. So all my coaching is very individualized and I call it coaching and not counseling for a specific reason. One, coaching is very educational. So I am acting in the role of a teacher. Right. And two, we work as a team. So there has, there's a notebook of 150 pages of exercises. So what they tell me, really easy, checking off, yes, no, one to four, you know, just real easy. But every sheet from what they tell me tells me what I have to teach them back. Mm -hmm. So we work as a team. So coaching is about progress, education, learning, switching up bad behaviors, identifying them and then recognizing them and be then becoming consciously aware. So it's like this rainbow process. And I was in the rainbow too. So that's how I describe it. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what you don't know and you can't change what you don't know. So once you know it, okay, these are my traumas. Now I get it. Now we start working with the education and that's a learning curve. And then there's practice. And once you start practicing it within four to six months, you're, you feel totally different. My people get better job offers um, or they switch jobs and get double the pay. Uh, they're having more friendships. They have more confidence, self-esteem. They feel amazing about themselves, about life. So that whole veil of that past is just gone. And then they create the life they really desire. And then at that point, then they have the love they deserve because they're not going to go out with someone who doesn't have their life together when they do. Mm -hmm. And that's my job as a life coach to make sure they have all these different areas of their life together. So, so is your experience that people can change? Can they change? Oh, absolutely. Or I wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> yeah, I have hundreds and hundreds of testimonials. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing mindset for success work since my 20s. Wow. Uh, when I was in my mid 20s, I had a model and talent agency in a school in uh, New York and Pennsylvania. I had it for 10 years and I had people from the little town of Erie, PA saying, I want to be a model. I want to be an actor. You know, one girl, I want to be a dancer. Well, where do you want to be? I want to be in the Rockettes. I said, let's get you in the Rockettes. 
One guy says it was an auto mechanic. I want to be on Baywatch. Let's get you on Baywatch. And we did. I did. So back then I was called the dream maker. But the first thing I had to do is get rid of the negative messages. I had one girl, Jennifer, come to me. She was like 21, size 22 girl. So plus size model. And her family, you know, the family are the meanest sometimes. It's like, look in the mirror, you're fat. You know, you're spending money on modeling. That's a joke. You're just throwing your money away. I said, Jen, can you get down to a size 16 with my help? She goes, I'll do anything to prove my family wrong. And this is what we call the watch me attitude. It's like, watch me. Like, um, and then she ended up modeling for Ford special sizes and made a fortune. So you can do, you dream if you have the right mindset. So I've been teaching mindset for over 40 years and mindset is a huge part of trauma healing. So it's a combination of mindset work, uh, recognizing the traumas, healing the traumas, practice uh, using the mindset tools that I would teach you and the trauma recovery tools. Um, What is it you desire? Naming it and then having a solid plan. So goal setting is a part of it. Spirituality is a part of it. Not religious, but being spiritual with faith that you can do what you dream to do. Um, So it's really amazing the transformations people do over and over and it doesn't matter their ages like i said my oldest man now is 79 um and i have a really sweet podcast i recently did with a client bob who came to me at 72 and he tells the story on the podcast and allows me to tell it but he was coming and trying to save his fourth marriage and asked me if i would meet with his wife she's there i'm done i'm fed up da, 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 da. so he's a prior alcoholic and then he went to ga he was a gambler so he's totally clean And I said, the problem is we have not, you know, you have never healed the childhood wounds. And he had a lot of childhood abuse Mm -hmm. and he never healed those. So his addictions were self-medicating that made him feel better for a period of time, but he never got rid of those original traumas. That was my job. So then we did that. Then I had to teach him how to help date someone who was emotionally healthy and he's been in a loving relationship now, seven years. He was crying on the podcast about how I changed his life and how happy he is. You know, so he's 79 now. I met him at 72 and he's been with the same lovely lady. And, um, you know, so a change can happen at any age. I just say, don't wait until your 70s. To find awesome. happiness. So we have a lot of our <laughs> listeners are not dating and some of them are really afraid of dating and so what would you tell them what advice could you give them right now on the podcast that maybe would help ease some of that maybe be able to look internally yeah try to get some help what would you what kind of advice could you give them first thing is be who you want to attract work on you raise your self-confidence your self-esteem feel healthy eat healthy don't party you know to the point of passing out be who you want to attract. If you want a successful partner, you be successful, right? That's the most important thing. You know, feel amazing about yourself first. And if you suffered from childhood trauma, a lot of times you will have low self-esteem and confidence. That's okay. We can create what your dream is. When Alexi told me, mom, I want to be a singer. Her father says, that's an effing joke. I (laughs) said, prove them wrong, babe. And there she is singing on three multi-platinum CDs. Why? Because the world aligned that I happened to meet that artist in a nightclub in South Beach. And then within the two months, she was uh, interviewed by the two of the top record producers she just met by happenstance. So that's part of the spiritual belief system. You claim what you want. You believe in it. You start the, the world going in that direction and things start aligning. But, you know, you have to believe in your dreams. Um, and you know, she was a great example of a young person. She wanted to change the world. She wanted to help the little children in Africa at age five. Now the save the children commercial. She goes, mom, I want to go save those kids. And I'm like, that's a beautiful dream, hon. Let's go do that. You can always do that. You decide when, well, as a singer, she goes on world tour, ends up in Africa, looks down from the tour bus and said, these kids need my help. How do I do it? You know, and then now she has 31 working water wells in Africa, and she started that at age 20. So for all our young listeners out there, your 20s is the most profound time period to make a difference in the world, you know, to start a cause, be a part of a cause, 
And when you do that, your own self-esteem and confidence goes up. So when you're dating, the number one thing to remember is you're just meeting a new friend. That's it. Take all the pressure off. Like, is this going to work? No, take the pressure off. Just say, I'm dating just to meet new friends. Have them be your guy friend or your, your, your lady friend first. Don't make it like, oh, I got to make this work. I got to be married. So all that pressure is not what you want. And you don't want to choose the wrong partner. So if you're really in dating mode, let's say you're older in life, late 20s, and you say, you know, now is the time that I would like to have a partner for marriage. Now we do what's called dating with intention. So you should have three to four dating dates a week. You need to have an excellent online profile. I rewrite all my people's online profiles. We do an examination of where you can meet people in your community. I ask everyone, where do they live? I do Google searches. I said, okay, you can do this. You can do that. You can do this. So it's a combination of meeting through friends and family, being out there in society and meeting people and being online. And when you're dating with intention three to four times a week, but you're just starting out, hey, how are you? You know, looking to meet you as a new friend. This is who I am. You have your life together. You, you have no in huge debt. You're not looking for someone to save you. Mm -hmm. You have got your life together. That's the number one thing you have to be first. Then go out and date. And that's what I said to my daughters. Find someone who's going to be an excellent financial partner. You girls have your life set. Steph, my other daughter, became a supervisor for JetBlue by age 24. She was making great money. So, you know, it's like create your lives that you're successful. You have your life together. You're feeling amazing about life. You've built your salary. You built your resume. Now you want to become a parent. I said, the other thing is you want to do is travel because once you have kids, you're not going to be able to travel. So <laughs> now one daughter has two sons. The other one has four. So I'm a grandmother of six, Aww. but they got a lot more traveling than I ever had done in their 20s. And now they're OK to be more settled down. But now the kids are older. They're starting to travel with them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a conscious choice of what you want your life to look like. And You're if you right. want to. Yeah. You know, I feel like I need to go out there and do something crazy. Like <laughs> I, 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 I just love the point on our podcast where, where the guest comes in and they start to. Uh, uh, reemphasize the exact same thing of the purpose of our podcast because someone with experience is actually saying this and, and and that was you know when you were talking about going on three or four dates a week and just not having pressure this isn't looking for love this is just making friends and getting to know people yeah. and finding out about yourself before you try to move into a relationship which uh, without any basis for for making a decision and, and that's what we really push right. on this podcast right. is we want people to do. That's why we call it. It's just dinner. It, it, it's not an yeah. invitation to a romance. It's an invitation to get to know someone. Exactly. It sounds like that's, exactly. what, that's what you found to be uh, with, with your uh, coaching. Yes. And, and then let me tell you what the research shows as far as what makes the most emotionally healthy, evolved and conscious relationships that sustain over time. So we call it the five F's or the foundations. One is a solid foundation of friendship. Be friends first. Don't be so quick to be sexual. You have to trust them. You have to really like them as your buddy, your friend, you're confident in who they are. They're not going to hurt themselves or others or you. And that takes time to see that. Everyone's perfect in the first 90 days. We call that the 90 day rule. Take your time. The other one is flexibility. Are they open-minded? Do they allow you to have your opinion and they can have yours? Are they easygoing? Great mood management. Emotionally open, able to communicate about anything. The third one is fidelity. Are they honest? Do they have integrity? Meaning you trust them to do what's right when nobody's looking. You just have no concern what they're doing when they're away from you. You don't need an itemized, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. No, that's tracking. You don't want someone that knows your every move. That's like codependency. Okay. Uh, loyalty. If you are exclusive, you trust that you're loyal and you are to each other. Um, fun. You have common interests, but they're allowed to have their own hobby and interests separate from yours. But you have to have enough together that you're having a lot of fun. 
um, then there's compromise. You're able to negotiate your differences and talk through issues without any yelling, screaming, or shutdown. Balanced individuals, you're both balanced. You both have a great successful life on your own. You're happy in the direction you're going. So if you're a college student, you're getting all A's and some B's. You know, you're working at school for your resume or you're in an internship, you know, so you're focused on what I do now is creating my future. If you have two people like that, that's what you want. You both have definite goals in mind. You're able to forgive and you're also able to accept responsibility when you make a mistake. Um, and one of the last ones that is most, uh, they said, keeps people together over time is that you share spiritual concepts. Mm -hmm. And again, that does not mean religion. You have to go to church one hour a week because when you're spiritual, that's who you are 24 seven. It's how you conduct your life. And that has to do a lot with honesty and integrity as well and doing the right things because that makes you feel good and feel confident about yourself and about your life. So you are looking for that type of person and you want to be that type of person. Those so are, working on your spouse in your twenties is the number one secret to having a good partner. Those are, those are so, so, so great. The five F's and can you, can you repeat those one more time? Was, yeah. Solid foundation, foundation. Uh, flexibility, okay. fidelity, friendship or best friends and fun. Okay. And then okay. the other ones are yeah. compromise, balanced individual, spirituality, and intimacy means ongoing affection uh, in a loving and kind way, no manipulation, no feeling obligated to, no being pushed, that kind of thing. And that's all from one page in Love Beyond Your Dreams. So it's a 400 page book. You can imagine what you're going to learn in there. So much. Yeah. I think we all need to go read those books. And all 13. Now, by the way, <laughs> threw a number six in there, which was forgive. And that, I think that's a really important F there. So. Yeah. Yeah. We have to realize we're all human. We all make mistakes, but you can forgive someone for yelling at you, but you can also say, you know, I think it's best we, we split as friends. I just don't see this as a partnership into the future. And love yourself first. You know, so, don't let anyone put you down, scream at you, mistreat you ever. 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 Now, Rihanna, before you leave, I you you said something and I want to go back to it. You said there are 24 questions to ask. Yeah. I'm just curious, what are some of those? I would you have 24. I just want to know what a couple of those are. Sure. They're in section four of the love book. Um, one of them is simply tell me about your mom and dad. So it's not like interview questions. It's like typical questions. Right. So if you hear, oh, my mom's an alcoholic. I can't stand it. She's yelling and screaming. She's so drunk by the time I get home from school. I just can't wait to get out of my house. We know that's a problem. That will okay. Problem. Do you have brothers and sisters? How old are they? Are you close with them? Oh, my one brother, he bullies me all the time. I never know when he's going to beat me up. And oh. then you see the guy has anger issues. Well... You know, it's not his fault. Childhood trauma is never our fault, but it doesn't mean you as a girlfriend or a boyfriend is there to solve these deeper wounds or issues. And, and these so, questions are, are in your book or where are they found? Yes, yes, they're in the love book. Love Beyond Your Dreams. Mm -hmm. Everyone um, to read that. Mm -hmm. So Rihanna tells where can we pick up your book and how can our listeners find you or get more information from you? Sure. The website is a plethora of information. So it's simply my name, rihannamilne.com. And on there, the first 60 pages of Love Beyond Your Dreams is downloadable along with Live Beyond Your Dreams from fear and doubt to personal power, purpose, and success. And that is all about the mindset for success. That's part of the goal setting system and creating the life you desire. So one book's towards creating the life you desire, which is mindset, and then having the love you deserve. So they are meant to go together. They're called sister books. Um, my podcast is Lessons in Life and Love. You can also get a button from there. I have the four free love tests on my website and the free ebook called Have the Love You Deserve. There you go. So there's lots of things on my website. Very good. Yeah. Wow. 
This, I just can't believe all the information. you. I gave know me. it was like, uh, like so much information. <laughs> I don't even, I'm like, how did I even like, it's a good thing. That all a in. podcast. If so good. Back and rewind I really will. Story, and that's just that tip of the iceberg, guys. That is like <laughs> you're so knowledgeable. Like, I could just tell you have so Thank much you. when you have a complex subject, you have to dummy it down for the dummies. And you and you did it. Like it's so so great. Well, that's how I teach. That's how I write. That's how my podcast is. It's just simple and to the point. I'm very direct. Because people don't need to hear a bunch of philosophy. They want to know, how can I solve this problem? How can I fix and, it? And, you know, how can I fix it? Yeah. And what do I need to do to be happier, to feel better, to get a better partner? There is a lot to teach. I can tell you that. There's a lot to teach. That's why my programs are four to six months. But I break it down into really easy exercises and really understandable content. So once you've got it, it's like, oh, okay, now we're going to practice this to change this, you know? So it's a step-by-step -step process. And like I said, it works for everyone age 16 through 75, 79. Uh, I have one girl, for example, Amy, uh, she's on one of my podcasts sharing her stories and she came to me at 17. Um, actually, her mom called me about her guy she was dating and she had a toxic husband and was wanting to know, did everything seem all right with this man who wanted to marry her? And I listened, I said, you know, I'm not hearing any red flags. I said, you have one child, does she like him? She goes, no. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, cause kids are very bright. You know, they want mom and dad to be happy. And if they don't like the partner, they're seeing something. Well, there was something deeper. And I don't know what made me ask the question. I said, was Amy adopted? And what was her biological family like? And yes, that was the case. Um, so she had abandonment issues. Um, and the father had an affair, the adoptive father. And then he ended up leaving and being with the girlfriend who became the new wife. Um, but the story was then this man came in, the only one she could count on was her mom. So when mom's affection went to the new partner, she felt ousted. So I said, I need to work with your daughter because you two are fighting all the time and she doesn't realize her abandonment is causing insecurity that she feels the only thing she can count on is going to leave her. So the mom said, wow, I never even thought that could have been it. I said, yes, I believe that's it. So she wasn't doing well in school and she was a smart girl. She's a great girl. So within six months of working with her and her mom was great. Linda's there, do whatever you need to do, Rihanna. I totally trust you. So I got her grades from C's up to A's and B's. We found out what she wanted to do, which is interior design. We got her into a better college. Um, and during that, she ended, I said, I don't want you being a hostess at this fast food joint anymore. She was dating the 30 year old dishwasher. I said oh. to her mom, I'm going to have her quit her job. She said, that's okay. So we got her a, a job in a home design store. I told her how to interview. She went in, she nailed it. She got sales within a few months. She's a manager and that goes on her resume for college. And then she was working at the top design store where the college was. So you could just see these huge steps of success once we healed the initial trauma. Yeah, that's so the story is amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. And, and she's still doing great. And uh, yeah, she ended up by happenstance meeting a couple that did a home design show on HGTV. They came into her design store. She goes, can I help on the set? You know? And she says, I never would have asked that before. And now she has that credit yes. of working on a TV show as a designer. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, yeah. It's so cool. It's so cool. So, you know, that's just one story of one of my young people at 17 by 18, she was flying, you know, just flying with success. So if you're a young person listening to this and you're still in mom and dad's home and you feel you need a little direction, you need help. I, I work online. I work with everyone around the world. So, you know, just reach out through rihannamilne.com and get yourself a discovery session. If you need your mom or dad to talk to me, that's okay too. Like, you know, the parents and I are very supportive and and they really let me do what I need to do to make you happy. And that's the goal, happy, successful, feeling amazing about yourself and about life. That's what life coaching is about. Okay, well, there you have it.
Brianna, thank that's you. amazing. Yeah. It's been fascinating. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. This has been you. great. So great. Um, and so Welcome. you guys can reach out to Rihanna. She's a world of, of uh, information, expertise, knowledge. Uh, so please go and, and talk to her if you need to and uh, be able to get an opportunity to get out of the apartment, to go out and date and be able to just sit down and make a friend. And I love what she said. I'm going to just kind of finish with this. She says, when dating, you're just making a new friend. And I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many times. That's what this podcast is all right. about. Mm -hmm. It's just go out and make a new friend. Well, Bob, Macy, Perfect. thank you. Yes. Oh, thank oh, you. You guys out there listening, you can always go out and check us on Instagram. We're at Dating Made Simple on Instagram. We're also out on TikTok as well. You can email us, and we'd love to get some of those bad date stories in. Macy, you've got plenty of those. You should get some <laughs> Oh, actually, a fun story. I'm a, I, My worst date was last year at Corn Bellies, and tonight I'm going to Corn Bellies again. So hopefully well, this day will be better. A PTSD. Better. Huh? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. So email us those stories at <laughs> it's just dinner podcast at gmail.com. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Rihanna. We really appreciate it. Nothing. Listen, you guys, just go have fun out there, would you?